Okay, we'd like to uh, welcome everyone to our regular council meeting for Tuesday, March the 3rd. Believe it or not, March has arrived. And hopefully uh, today is no indication of what the rest of March will be like. Hopefully the warm weather will begin and we'll all be happy, happy, happy. Uh, before we get into the regular council meeting, we do have a proclamation. And I think I have representatives from the channel. If you'd like to come forward, please. This proclamation is the annual Stigma Awareness Week. Uh, if you can just come over, and if you would like, just uh, briefly give your name, and you want, might want to take a minute or two and just want to talk a little bit about channel, and then I'll get into the proclamation. Sure. Okay. Um, I'm Heidi Anderson. I'm peer support, regional peer support for channel here in Grand Falls, Windsor. We're a nonprofit mental health organization that's founded in peer support. So individuals like myself with lived experience support other individuals with lived experience. Okay. And I'm Mike Carroll. I'm the provincial coordinator for the province of Newfoundland and Labrador. And I support the staff throughout the province. And I am Karen Smith, and I am a volunteer with Channel for the past three years. So you're shy, Karen? Are you trying to hide away from the cameras? <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome, and certainly, uh, certainly uh, glad that you're able to come. And, uh, we recognize the work that the channel is doing in the community and certainly uh, has done a lot of work over the years and we certainly like to support them. And it's my pleasure tonight to uh, uh, acknowledge with the proclamation the annual Stigma Awareness Week, whereas March the 8th to March the 14th is designated by channel as the annual Stigma Awareness Week, and whereas this week is a time to acknowledge the negative impact of stigma in the lives of individuals living with mental health and addictions issues, and their families, and their support. Whereas this week is a time to call to action all members of our society to address the growing issue of stigma and discrimi discrimination of people living with mental health and addictions issues. Whereas the Town of Grand Falls Windsor support community partners and is moving forward with its commitment to create a culture of understanding and equality for all citizens. And I think that's a great statement and we can get there as quickly as possible, it'd be great. Therefore, be it resolved that the town of Grand Falls, Windsor proclaims March the 8th to March 14th as the annual Stigma Awareness Week in the town of Grand Falls, Windsor. And I certainly encourage uh, residents uh, to uh, go on the channel site and uh, certainly learn more about it. And I think the more that we talk about uh, the stigma that's attached, uh, again, as I've said in the past, uh, people who are, um, I guess, uh, affected by other types of illness that are physical, uh, it seems like it's easier to talk about. But when it comes to mental health issues, it always seems that we want to sort of shy away from that. And I think we have this change, the culture has to change, because it is something that many, many people are facing. And many, many people are living through it, and a lot of cases are living through it alone. And partly because of the fact of the stigma that's attached to it and people are not always open and accepting. And so we just hope that during this week, as we, uh, we concentrate on that and center some of our, our uh, thoughts upon uh, the stigma that's attached, that more of us will become educated and more of us will become aware of uh, some of the problems that people are facing and certainly will be open to discussing and talking about it and certainly getting out in the open. So I just encourage all of our citizens to do that, and it's my pleasure to sign uh, this proclamation. And I shall give you a copy, Heidi, and thank, thank you, you so much for all the work that you do. Thank you. It's certainly a pleasure to meet you, yeah. and wish you all the best, yeah. and have a great week. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> okay, moving on to the agenda for tonight's meeting. Uh, just want to, uh, first of all, ask if there's any errors or omissions in the meeting of 441, which was held on Tuesday, February the 10th. Any errors or omissions? 
If not, can we have a mover and a seconder for that? It's moved by Councillor Cody Davis and seconded by Councillor Moores. Uh, all those in favour? Contraminded. Motion is carried. Any business arising out of the minutes? No business arising out of the minutes. We will move along to our disbursement reports. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Council I move the disbursement report for the period of March 3rd, 2015 in the amount of $387,883.39. Okay, moved by Councillor Mercer and second by Councillor Pinson. Any questions, discussions on the disbursement report? If not, all those in favour? Against, motion is carried. Moving into committee reports, public works, and planning. Councillor Finn. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The Public Works and Planning Committee met on Tuesday, February 17th at 4.30 p.m. Present were myself as chairperson, <coughs> Mayor Al Hawkins, Deputy Mayor Barry Manuel, Councillor Bruce Morris, Councillor Amy Cody Davis, Councillor Rodney Mercer, Councillor Tom Pinson. Town Manager Mike Pinson, Director of Engineering Works Jeff Saunders, and Town Planner Mary Wan. Land requests, GEL Builders, 1 Columbus Drive. Committee request, uh, excuse me, the committee reviewed a request for land at the rear of 1 Columbus Drive and recommend staff obtain more detailed information prior to making a decision. <coughs> land request 33 Crescent Heights. The committee reviewed a request for additional land at 33 Crescent Heights. The committee recommends this be approved. Sufficient land will remain as a public walkway between Crescent Heights and Manche Road. Also, a municipal water line is located in this area and an easement will have to be in place. Land will be sold as per policy. Riverfront development. The committee discussed the next steps to a riverfront, to, next steps to the riverfront development proposals. There has been two submissions for tourism accommodations as well as a visioning session with track consulting. <coughs> the committee recommends the two proposals be supported in principle. There are still details to be resolved concerning zoning, commercial venture, and, and not to be used for residential, uh, timelines, construction standards, uh, etc. The land is crowned and will be acquired by the town and then sold or leased to the proponents. Deeds would have to be encumbered to address concerns of future use of, uh, of the property. Street names. Members of council presented their list of street names based on submissions from residents. Staff will compile the numbers giving weight to the ranking of the names by each member of council. This list will be circulated for discussion at the next public works meeting. Street signs. The approval, approval to use the poppy. The committee reviewed the street signs as presented <coughs> to be used in honor, uh, to be used to honor veterans and war events. The committee recommends this be approved and forwarded to Ottawa Command for their review. Building development, number one, rifts on Main Street. The committee discussed, discussed the review and walkthrough of the rifts building on Main Street and if it would fit into our plans for a public use function. The committee recommends that due to the amount of work and associated costs required to bring the building up to code, they decline the offer to accept this property. Number two, GFA Maple Building. The committee recommends that a meeting be arranged with the school board to discuss the Maple Building and surrounding lands as part of any agreement to acquire this property. Correspondence, Cordero Brook Development Land Request. The committee reviewed the request for, for town-owned land required for the next phase of the Cordero subdivision. The committee recommends this be appro approved and sold as per policy. <coughs> Twin Falls Oasis RV Park. The committee was pleased with the Department of Environment and Conservation's uh, that the Department of Environment and Conservation recognized the comment from Council on this proposed development at Leach Brook. Council was concerned that the parking and access to the popular swimming site would not be considered or maintained. Proposed bu uh, apartment building, Memorial Avenue. The committee reviewed the plans from the developer requesting a change from the original to 
excuse me, from the original three eight unit buildings. Rentals to the second story units are difficult and usually rentals, rentals are more short term and higher turnover. The proposal for the third structure is to be a one story building containing, containing six units. The committee recommends this be approved. Staff will work with the developer on facade details, parking and traffic, traffic flows, etc. <coughs> Development requests 11th Avenue. The committee reviewed a proposal to relocate a house to a parcel of land at the end of 11th Avenue. The committee recommends that before this can be considered, more details are required. The facade has been modified so that it looks like a residential property. Buildings, building, <coughs> building located on the land is a concern and needs to move back further and the access to and the access and sufficient space for a turnaround must be considered. Land will work with the applicant on the required information for the next public works meeting. Garbage regulations. The committee discussed the proposed changes to the garbage regulations that are required due to the new sorted central program. The committee recommends that proposed changes discussed be incorporated into the regulations. The new document will be circulated for further comment and possible changes before being recommended for approval. The meeting adjourned at 7.30 p.m. Mr. Mayor, I move the recommendations and report of this committee. Okay, so moved by Councillor Finn and second by Councillor Moores. Any questions, discussions on the uh, minutes of the Parks Works, I'm sorry, of the Public Works and Planning Committee? And if there are none, all those in favor? Against, motions carry. Parks, Recreation and Special Events. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The Parks, Recreation and Special Events Committee met on Wednesday, February 18th at 4.30 p.m. In attendance were myself as chair, Councillor Rodney Mercer, Councillor Bruce Moores, Councillor Tom Pinsent, Councillor Darren Finn, and Mayor Alan Hawkins. Staff were Todd Mercer, Leisure Services Programmer, Keith Antle, Parks and Recreation Foreman, Russ Thibault, Municipal Police Chief, and David Nichols, Director of Parks and Recreation. Stadium concerns, Chief Thibault informed the committee that municipal police officers have been experiencing problems with the actions of certain spectators at senior hockey games. In particular, during the last weekend games, there were a number of spectator problems that resulted in various actions being taken to rectify the problems. Chief Thibault requested direction on these matters and direction on how to handle future game incidents should they occur. The committee discussed this matter and it was noted that the town does have a policy to address such concerns. The committee recommends the code of conduct for spectators be reviewed, revised, and drafted to suit present day circumstances. Following this process, the committee will finalize this policy and post the policy in both stadiums. Winterlude 2015 review. The committee reviewed the 2015 Winterlude. Other than the bowling tournament and the sleigh rides, which had to be rescheduled due to inclement weather, all other events were on schedule. The director noted that all of the activities were well attended and several of the food events were actually sold out. The committee would like to thank all of the groups and individuals who participated in the organization of the 23rd annual Winterlude. Correspondence Newfoundland Labrador Volleyball Association. The committee discussed correspondence received from the Newfoundland Labrador Volleyball Association requesting that the town co-sponsor the Provincial, Provincial Senior Men's and Women's Volleyball Championships on March 13th and 14th. It was noted that the town has co-sponsored this event for a number of years and the completion of the new Exploits Valley High School Gymnasium has increased the number of teams in town. The committee recommends that the town co-sponsor this event for the amount of $500. Correspondence recycling. The committee discussed correspondence from a resident requesting the town's involvement in a recycling program. The committee recommends that this correspondence be referred to the Public Works Committee for review. Church Road Park concerns, the committee discussed correspondence received from a resident with respect to the water fountain at Church Road Park. The resident is dissatisfied with the lack of response from the town concerning information on the repair of the fountain. In particular, the resident is quite dissatisfied with the lack of response received from the Director of Parks and Recreation. The Parks and Recreation foreman informed the committee that staff have been waiting on work to be completed by the Public Works Department, addressing the drainage concerns and obtaining the appropriate handle mechanism to repair the fountain. The foreman has contacted the Public Works Department and they will complete the drainage in early spring. 
The committee recommends that the fountain be repaired, the drainage be repaired, and the fountain be in operation as soon as possible. The committee also recommends that the resident be contacted and informed of the town's plans to have the fountain returned to working order. Playground equipment update. The director informed the committee that the remaining playground equipment tender package has been completed. The assist assistant director of engineering has finalized the tender package and it is scheduled to be advertised commencing on this Saturday. Following the tender completion, competition rather, delivery of the equipment will be within five weeks of the order placement. Midwinter Biver update. The leisure services programmer provided the committee with an update on the Midwinter Biver. Registration and ticket sales for the supplementary events are going quite well. The meet and greet and the gala dinner are both sold out. Due to the weather, the Biver route has been changed to a west destination direction. The committee looks forward to a successful and enjoyable weekend for all participants. And Mr. Mayor, I had the opportunity to take part in, uh, in most all events, and I must say it was a tremendous success. And I'd like to congratulate the Leisure Services Programmer, Director of Recreation, and all the staff to town. To make that happen, it was no small undertaking, as you know. Uh, Sean Majumder was uh, in attendance and really brought a lot of uh, uh, fun, we'll say, to the event. Mm -hmm. And uh, people had at quite... At some people's expense. Yeah, at some people's expense, which is, uh, which is normal. We won't mention any names or anything, but... It was a great weekend overall, and it's uh, nice for the town. Nice for the town to be able to have those types of events. Obviously, it's something we'd like to continue to do in the future. I'm sure after it being such a success this year. United Church Provincial Conference. The director informed the committee that staff have met with the United Church Provincial Conference organizing committee. The Provincial United Church Conference will be held at the Joe Byrne Memorial Stadium from May 28th to May 31st, 2015. The town previously hosted this conference in 2009. The organizing committee is expecting over 300 delegates for the conference. The organizing committee and staff look forward to a successful conference. <laughs> Parks and Recreation Winter Programs Update. The Leisure Services Programmer provided the committee with an update on the Parks and Recreation Winter Programs. A few of the proposed programs will not be offered due to lack of gymnasium availability and low registration. However, several programs will begin in the next week and others will begin in March. The Leisure Services Program will also discuss structural plans for the Corridor Brook Enhancement Building and the Cross Country Ski Building as drafted by the Engineering Department. The committee recommends that both of these plans be updated and presented for discussion at the next committee meeting. Memorial Green Space Area. The committee discussed various requests to receive, requests received to plant trees and shrubs in various locations in memory of individuals and groups. The committee recommends that a policy be developed to identify qualifications, locations, purchase and maintenance costs, and long-term responsibility requirements for these projects. Sports Recognition Wall of Fame. Chairman Deputy Mayor Emanuel presented some points of discussion with respect to a timeline on the organization and selection of a Sports Recognition Wall of Fame Advisory Committee. The committee will discuss this project and the preparation of a terms of reference for the Advisory Committee at the next Parks and Recreation Special Events Committee meeting. Banners, the committee discussed a request to erect more banners at the, at the stadiums to highlight championships won over the various decades. The committee recommends that no more banners be erected at this time. The meeting adjourned at 7.10 p.m. and I move the recommendations and report of this committee. Moved by Deputy Mayor and second by Councillor Pinsent. Any questions, discussion on the parks, recreation, special events, minutes? If not, all those in favor? Contraminded or against, motions carry. Economic development and tourism, I just uh, want to make reference um, that there are, there are a set of, uh, rec couple, I guess, minutes and recommendations. However, uh, that meeting was intended to have a quorum, but due to the chair not being able to get there and time went on, it, it wasn't discussion went ahead, but actually um, under the terms it would not constitute a meeting because of the fact there wasn't a quorum. So if you want to remove them or make a motion to have them removed from the regular meeting, you can do that and we'll move on. So. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, I would like to uh, make a motion that we remove the economic development and tourism minutes from February 23rd um, from this agenda and uh, revert them back to uh, committee week for um, proper review and discussion and uh, recommendations come back again. Okay, let's move. Second by Councillor Finn. Questions, discussion, all those in favor? 
Against, motion's carried. Moving on, Finance and Administration, Councillor Mercer. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Mayor, Finance and Administration Committee met Thursday, February 19th at 4.30. In attendance, uh, myself as Chair, Mayor Hawkins, Deputy Mayor Barry Manuel, Councillor Bruce Moores, Councillor Amy Cody Davis, Councillor Tom Vincent, and staff, uh, Barry Griffin, Director of Finance and HR. Central Newfoundland Waste Management. The committee reviewed the 2015 annual operating budget for the Central Newfoundland Waste Management. It was noted that the Director of Finance had met with Central Newfoundland Waste Management back in September and requested that overhead costs be allocated to curbside pickup. The committee recommends that we continue to lobby the board to allocate the overhead expenses. Municipal Police. The committee reviewed the uh, complaint uh, policy prepared by the police chief. The purpose of this policy is to define and record all complaints referred to our Municipal Police Department. The committee recommends that this policy be accepted. Chiropractor taxation. The committee reviewed a request from a local chiropractor to reduce the tax rate charged to chiropractors for professional services from current group class four 30 mills professional services. The committee recommends that chiropractors be removed from this group and included in class 2A 15 mills. Utility tax. The committee reviewed the taxation of utilities. Statements have been received from Newfoundland Power and Bell Mobility. Uh, total revenue from these sources is $729,491, an increase of $18,782 over budget. The committee was pleased with the realized tax revenue. Funding request. The committee discussed the request from the Youth 2000 Center to fund two delegates to the annual conference in Ottawa. The committee recommends funding two delegates to be approved, subject to at least one of those delegates being a full-time, non-grant employee. The cost of of this is estimated to be approximately $2,460. The committee also received a request from the town band to purchase two timpani drums at a cost of $4,259. The committee recommends that this be approved. Salt usage. The committee reviewed salt usage for 2014. Total salt expenses for the year was $111,910, an increase of 13.5% or $13,340. Total usage was 1,081 tons compared to 808 tons the previous year. Social media, internet, cell phone use. The committee discussed the need to have policies concerning the use of social media, internet, and cell usage to govern employees during work hours. Policies of this nature are common in many organizations. The committee recommends staff research this, this issue and develop policies for the committee's review. The meeting adjourned at 7 p.m. and I move the recommendations and report of this committee. Moved by Councillor Mercer and second by Councillor Finn. Any questions, discussions on the finance and administration minutes? If not, all those in favor and against, motion is carried. Any notice of motion? If not, move on to other business. And Deputy Mayor, we'll start with you this time. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, not much uh, for me, really. Uh, one thing I'd like to point out is at the last meeting, um, I talked a little bit about the um, long-term care shortage and the number of beds in uh, the long-term care facility here in town. And uh, I erred in my math uh, when I did it quickly in my head did as I was... A, did I was plus, plus in math? I did, I did fairly well in math, <laughs> actually, at one point. But uh, in this case, I, was, I, I did fail. Uh, it was just all the information that I was, uh, you know, going on my little rant there, which I still feel strongly about, and I'm sure we all do, in terms of the shortage up there. I uh, calculated the full population and as opposed to a population over 60 and came up with a number that was out of whack, but, I mean, it doesn't diminish the fact that there is a shortage here in Grand Falls, Windsor of long-term bids, and the issue is no less significant, but I felt it appropriate just to point out my mistake there, and I'm sure the... Uh, uh, the local media has been informed of, as well of that, so a correction can be made. just wanted to point that out. Um, the only other thing I really wanted to mention uh, in the discussion is the whole uh, riverfront development that came up and the uh, mill demolition, which is uh, starting to move along, I understand, even though folks in town may not see any actual physical demolition because there's so many things to take care of there with removal of assets and... Uh, and remediation and that that you wouldn't see, uh, that mill 
uh, is going to be uh, out of the picture in a couple of years, and we've had a good planning session with uh, Track Consulting just recently, and I guess the only reason why I wanted to bring it up is to encourage us all to continue that momentum because what happens down on that riverfront, uh, not only where the mill property is, but other areas is very significant to the future of this community, not in the short term, but in the long term. When you look at the decades to come right from uh, you know, the area up behind the old, what I call the old frost top, uh, back in the Grand Falls house and, uh, uh, and property, of course, we're expecting a committee report or a consultant's report in May, I believe it is, or June on uh, sustainability plan for that, the mill property itself, and then um, the other area of the river, which has already been somewhat developed with Gorge Park and Sanger Park, and of course we had the ski trail and that, but the idea is to make sure that we uh, plan appropriately, effectively, and uh, I'd like to assure the citizens, because questions have been coming to me, and I'm sure to others, that there will be a public consultation in this process. This is not something we're going to rush into and decide without full uh, opportunity for the uh, local citizen to get involved and to give their input in that. And I've had a lot of good uh, suggestions already uh, from citizens in that, that they'll have the uh, opportunity to bring up. Um, this past Saturday, uh, there was a special ride, a memorial ride for uh, young Nolan Smith, who passed away just before Christmas. And uh, just wanted to throw congratulations to the organizers of that event. Uh, I think they had somewhere around 130 uh, people register and take part. Uh, it's something they're going to continue for years to come. And uh, as a result of their fundraising, they've, uh, well, they're in the process of developing a scholarship now that would be in Nolan's memory. And uh, they had a beautiful day for it as well. So, you know, another example of how young people get together and uh, really do a great job to uh, to organize this sort of event and it's great to see that uh, that no one's memory be recognized there um, and just a few more quick things of course the annual paminko is on this weekend uh, the 51st year now i guess because we we plugged it last year as the 50th annual and uh, i'm not sure if they're still taking teams or not but the event is on at the curling club this weekend so i wish them all the best in that also going on this weekend is the fred grimes Memorial Hockey Tournament here in town, and uh, Fred Grimes, I'm sure a lot of citizens will remember Mr. Grimes and the contribution he made, uh, particularly minor hockey, but in other areas as well in the community. So I'd encourage people to get out and uh, take in some good bantam hockey that'll be going on here the weekend. And of course, the other bit of hockey that would be going on this weekend uh, is the cataracts. Really? Uh, the cataracts are up. I didn't think you were going to mention that. <laughs> Up two games and nothing in their series against the Cornerbrook Royals and looking very strong. And, of course, no one wants to take anything for granted. But uh, this week in an opportunity to really take a stranglehold on that series. So we'd encourage people to get out and support the Cataracts. And I know uh, they get good support from the community anyways. But uh, uh, looking for back-to-back -back herders in three in the last five years and uh, to continue to increase Grand Falls-Windsor's lead in the provincial herder title uh, championship total, which is at 12 now, and if they were to win, I won't say what number it would be at because it might bring them bad luck. But, uh, <laughs> but anyhow, it's, uh, it's going on this weekend, and if you can get out and support, uh, that would be great. Um, the Red Cross uh, had flag raising here yesterday as well that I took part in, and they, uh, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's Red Cross recognition month, basically, basically the month of March, and everybody knows. Uh, what kind of great work they do and they're always there uh, when needed and there's a great group of volunteers there so I just wanted to point that out and uh, finally just one point that uh, we discussed in the in the economic development meeting that that wasn't I guess um, the town items brand items and that which I'm sure we're going to have some more discussion on but I'd like to uh, make sure I guess that we think carefully about what kinds of things that we're purchasing there uh, and we get the best bang for our buck, so I just want to make sure that that holds off until the next meeting before any purchases are made. I think that's going to be the case, but you know, it's important for us to market ourselves effectively as per perfectly centered, and you see a lot of toques and, and hats and that around now, and uh, 
I'm sure we would uh, discuss there this. There some should more be in the according next to the mayor going out from this office. So there should, everybody in this town should have a toot. Well, great, right now. And, and so they should. And let's keep giving them out too, because it's good we'll promotion have, for we'll us. We're going to be tooted out, <laughs> and they're nice. And we get a lot of good comments on our branding. And uh, even Sean Majumder, when he was in Absolutely. that weekend, uh, commented on uh, how he, he liked the branding that uh, we use. So, anyway, Mr. Mayor, that's it for me. Thanks for thank your time. you, Deputy Mayor. And certainly, uh, I'd like to uh, compliment the Deputy Mayor on his. Job well done the weekend in bringing color to not that Watsu wouldn't bring color to the uh, to the uh, to the cataract games, but uh, um, I, I couldn't imagine myself in in I w actually I was in Toronto and and Saturday and Sunday being in Toronto realizing what are you watching I'm watching the cataract games, so you got to be pretty boring in Toronto the Leafs can't be around and the Raptors can't be much better, but in a, it was what what no I wouldn't not for me. Um, but I must say that th that's a great service, to, particularly for people that, that can't make it. And, uh, and I must say, as well done, George did a great job, and of course Barry did a great job. It's, sometimes it's too bad that uh, you got to wait for a word, Barry, and, uh, and there's uh, like uh, air time, and it's just not there. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, I must say it was well done, and I certainly congratulate the cataracts, and can't wait till Saturday night to come. I tell you. What's that? I'm just hoping, if I'm allowed, uh, depending upon on my uh, demeanor and the way in which I get on at a game. So, uh, well, I guess I've got to tone, I've got to tone it down a bit. So, uh, hopefully, there'll be no problems or issues. So, looking forward to it. Go Cats, go! <laughs> Councillor Finn. <laughs> you got to listen closely. To what's that? Musk, you got to listen closely to what's going on here. The undertone. Yeah, I know. <laughs> 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 uh, just a few things, Mr. Mayor. Um, one, I'll just segue off uh, something that Deputy Mayor spoke about, which is riverfront development. And, uh, <coughs> and uh, the, some of the public may be wondering where we are with the mill demolition. And of course, the town manager shared some communication with us today. And that in that the staff have met with the company that's demolishing the mill, which is Delson. And they are moving ahead with their plans. And wouldn't expect, you wouldn't, so the public wouldn't expect to see any s physical demolition on that site until the spring or early summer, uh, but they're actively uh, working around that site now. Uh, would be, I guess, the Coles Notes version of uh, mm -hmm. that update. Mm -hmm. The other thing, Mr. Mayor, I wanted to add is that the uh, recycling program has started uh, for us in uh, Grand Falls, Windsor, but has also started for, started for all the municipalities and local service districts across central Newfoundland. and. Uh, and so that started on Monday, and uh, so uh, we've only had two days of testing out, and you know we're having some really good compliance, even though it's voluntary uh, until the 30th, and after which point on the 30th it becomes a mandatory program. And uh, so we have some very huge uptakes in some areas and some low uptakes in other mm -hmm. areas, but. Uh, per perhaps that's because it's voluntary and, uh, you know, it's just taking people some time to get around to getting their bags, th their supplies, and learning what got to go into what bag. So I think we're all going to be patient about that. But I want to talk about it again, and I'll probably talk about it in the next meeting because, you know, I want people to uh, not get caught up in uh, not being up to speed by the time the deadline comes around. Uh, if, if any members of the public uh, has any questions about the program, deadlines, or what goes in what bag, or what's accepted or rejected, uh, or those kinds of questions, they can call the Central Newfoundland Waste Management uh, Group at 653-2900. And they also have a website, which is uh, www.cnwmc.com. Um, so the residents can go to... Uh, the Waste Management Authority for their questions. And the reason why I refer them there, even though uh, councillors will take their questions as always, is that it, this is a program that, you know, that is imposed on the town of Grand Falls, Windsor. So we are, uh, we're, we're voluntarily told participants, you know, we're, we're required, you know, like, uh, like, like, all like all communities. And, uh, um, uh, so, like, so everybody's are, everybody's experiencing the issues uh, uh, of getting up to speed on what's accepted and what's not. I have to admit that I'm 
all the time looking at garbage in my own home and the homes of my families and, and being feeling questions like when you're, you know, when you're making supper or whatever, like, is this garbage or is this recyclement? And I have to say, I don't always know the answer, and that's mm -hmm. for sure. But I, but I always I keep my chart out, Char which was checklist. In, in the, in the uh, that came was distributed to all the homes, so is, is posted right in my kitchen, and so I refer to it all the time. There are so many items listed there, but I'll, I, I will be the first to admit that is not all inclusive. There are many things there that. Uh, that you'll still say, I don't know, I don't fit in any of them categories, so you know, I'll say, I'll take a chance and say, well, let's garbage or recycle. It's probably not the advice I should give, but you know, it got to go in one bag, and you know, we're not expecting you to keep garbage home until we get it sorted out. Mr. Mayor, I've gotten in trouble <laughs> already. A couple of times in your own home. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> I'm putting garbage in the wrong place. <laughs> I tell you, well, yeah. well, we just uh, we just completed our first today. It was our first exposure. We yeah. started last week. And so it's been an interesting conversation in, 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 it's only between Joan and I, but uh, it still is interesting because you got, like you said, you got to go through and, and like, where's this going to fit? So you, yeah. one or the other, because like a paper towel, for example, will fit, you would think would go in maybe to a recyclable, but it's not, that goes into the garbage, but the actual cardboard roll from the Paper towel goes yeah. into the into the yeah. recycle. So it's going to take a while. Yeah. But I think a lot of concern. I know. I know um, my wife's biggest concern is the fact that she's got 200 black bags that she's not going to be able to use. And I said, well, the thing about it, we got to the end of March, so we usually one one bag. So at the end of March, we should have about 196 left. So uh, <laughs> I don't know if we're going to be able to sell them on the mainland or whatever. But uh, uh, there's a lot of people in in that situation. But hey, listen, yeah. it's. Uh, just one of those things that we got to work through, but it will with time. And again, it's a, it's a lot of getting used to of exactly how to separate. And, and I think it would probably be a lot easier if if it was in like open bins, like a, just a blue box or whatever, and just throw it in. But where you got to get the bags and yeah, well, yeah it'll come. And, and I've learned because I've checked around, and, and I will comment with bags because it is still clear bags for garbage and blue bags for recycling. And I have checked around the retailers just to see, you know, my own, have a look around, see what's available. And a lot of the, uh, they're not really, they have been supplied, but they're not, they're sold out in many places very quickly. So I've, uh, in a number of the retail outlets, and I won't mention any one in particular, the, the shelves are empty and signs posted saying stock, restock, it will be coming soon, those kinds of signs. The inter signs. interesting thing I found today, and yeah. I think we'll probably find, yeah. is that all of a sudden, my black bag that normally would have been this full was yeah. just like hardly anything in it at all. Yeah, and a lot my of recyclable bag was the one that's filled. So yeah, a lot of recycling we'll stuff is bulky, yeah. and that's the thing, right? And uh, I suppose in, in 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 Newfoundland, a lot of that stuff was stuff we burn in stoves, and there's lots of wood stoves, and you know it's just our culture and how we survive in, <coughs> in Newfoundland. So. Uh, uh, yeah, it's so you know, it's well, how much we get recovered from this program. We'll we'll soon see after a few months because it's all measured. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know, and the, and the other thing I'll point to, one point out about the blue bags and the clear bags is I, I've observed that they are a little more expensive mm -hmm. per bag per unit, and I'm not sure what that is, uh, what the cause of that is, but. Uh, uh, it's something I recognize. Uh, I, I'm really not quite it's sure. supply and demand. What's that? Supply and demand. <laughs> yeah, well, you had to buy the black bag, right. too, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know, but... So, uh, they were more plentiful. What? <laughs> they were more plentiful. Yes, they are certainly more plentiful, and I'll, I'll, be, I'll be not unlike the mayor in that I will have a supply left as well. <laughs> but I will find use for that. <laughs> it's not supposing, I have to, <laughs> supposing I have to recycle them. <laughs> Uh, so so uh, that's really all I wanted to add about the uh, the program. All of the information <laughs> is also on the Town of Grand Falls Windsor website if, if the members of the public are listening tonight and they never quite got what their website was or the telephone number. They still can go to our the Town of Grand Falls Windsor website and get all the same information. Um, and, uh, and of course, councillors will take, uh, as, as we always will, we'll always take questions and help the best we can in explaining the program. Um, I also, uh, Mr. Mayor, on the same topic, but, uh, uh, but as our own program, I want to just speak quickly about the anti 
I'll, I'll say the anti-litter program is the litter cleanup program that we have for town and grandpas. We that we started last year was our first year, mm -hmm. and I, I think it's time that we start talking about that again. Let's get that going. Uh, it will fall to mm -hmm. recreation this year. Is that right, Deputy Mayor? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so uh, so let's start talking about that uh, in terms of like the program. Was it uh, ten thousand dollars we put into that? Uh, uh, litter cleanup program and the money gets basically subdivided uh, to community groups that are interested in cleaning up certain sections of the town and uh, through our recreation uh, parks and recreation department we take proposals on areas to clean up and there's some coordinating on what areas because we want to get all the areas of town cleaned up and it's an opportunity for community groups to uh, uh, earn some revenue for their own causes and also uh, do some good for the community. So um, I'm launching the idea tonight uh, for this year, and uh, so I'd like for us to get working on it and start talking about it uh, in all of your own public, uh, uh, in your own opportunities to speak to the public wherever they may be over the next few weeks because April will be here soon enough. No, that's... <laughs> um, so that's that, Mr. Mayor. The only other... Uh, uh, thing I want to reference is from the public works minutes and that is the um, we kind of went through we went through the, uh, the the all the minutes but there were two things uh, well there were actually there were three things uh, in the minutes that were all related they're all there they're certainly public works issues but they're certainly connected to the tourism industry and the interest in development uh, in tourism development in the town of Grand Falls Windsor and in Newfoundland in general. And uh, the first uh, item there that was discussed uh, in terms of an approval uh, was the riverfront development in terms of uh, lodge development along next Bleach River. And the other, th the next thing was the, uh, uh, the uh, excuse me, it was, it was two lodges and then it was the, uh, it was the RV park at the, what I'll call Leechbrook, what most people in our community would know it as Leechbrook, even though it's called Thunderbrook now. Uh, is, uh, and, and, uh, and of course we have our own riverfront development plans going on. So like there's a ton of private interest in expanding the, the tourism accommodations market. There are other things that council has been as aware of that we haven't talked about in public yet, but uh, we hope that becomes uh, something uh, tangible and positive for the community. So there's a lot of interest in tourism development, accommodations and uh, RV uh, uh, type investments. And uh, you know, it's, it's, for me, it sends a good signal uh, that uh, uh, from the business community to the community that they see it as a, an opportunity for to, to establish a business and, and make those kinds of investments. So I just wanted to highlight it because it was in the public work minute, minutes, but it was in there as uh, more of housekeeping items in terms of us having to, to approve things in principle and communicate with environment and conservation. But it wasn't in there in terms of uh, the, uh, I'll say the, uh, the, uh, the theme of what this all meant in terms of the investment in in the community and region. So I just wanted to highlight that, Mr. Mayor. That's all I have for this evening. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Pinson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just good to continue on with what uh, Councillor Finn was just saying about the riverfront development. We just went through an exercise of trying to narrow down with the mill. We talked with the mill demolition and everything else. And to reassure the public that, you know, there is it's one of the things that uh, I think this council one of the few things we unanimously agree to is that you know, tourism is one of the economic generators that we are sort of interested in and riverfront development and the mill demolition and everything else is forefront with us. Uh, with the deputy mayor, I'm stealing some of their thunder now, the Biva, uh, which I, I view as kind of tourism as well. Uh, say well done to that, that was a good event. Uh, myself and the mayor had to go to a teen pageant. <laughs> But uh, so we just caught too. the end. Of, what, pardon me? That was good too. It was good too. Yes, it was great as well. But uh, congratulations to the organizers and the uh, director of. Uh, you can bring Parks. your comments back, director of Parks. And you can bring back the same. Well done, and well done yourself. Uh, what, as we get into spring, hopefully it's around the corner. We hope. Uh, you see the crews are out after a massive 
storm we just had, and uh, the roads are going to start to thaw, and we're going to start. We're already starting to see the bumps. So I ask the public to be careful. The roads are now showing the signs of winter and the signs of warming up, and so just keep an eye open for it. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, to Miss Teen Pageant, I'd like to congratulate the organizers of that, and especially County Court uh, Councillor Davis for. Uh, Getting me to go, be a judge, allowing me to be a judge, and it was kind. Of, it was. It wasn't. Uh, I don't make it sound. It wasn't bad. It's not my kind of thing. To be truthful <laughs> with you, but uh, I was impressed with the uh, the, the quality of the young people, yeah. and uh, and I congratulate Chantel uh, Zuri. Chanel. 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 Zuri. See, I, that's why I'm no good at it. I don't even remember the names who won, right? But they were all Chanel. outstanding. And uh, Zuri. Zuri. Yeah. The pizza guy. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, all the, all the girls, they really, I mean, you, it's hard to, you, you listen to these people speak and you remember that they're 15, 16, 17 years old, you know, very, still very, very young, but very mature beyond their years. And I was quite impressed with that. And finally, little, finally, little miss, I usually a, don't. A little, there was a little miss too, and there was a, there was a little tremendous miss. amount of work. There was a whole bunch of little by, misses. <laughs> done by the youth, actually. Yeah. Uh, Emily Bland, she organized the whole thing, ran the whole thing. Did an absolute fabulous job, yep. and uh, the first name I think is Julianne House, is the Little Miss Grand Falls Windsor. Um, if I if I have uh, if, if I yes if I missed the first name, <laughs> but I, I'm I'm, do, I'm trying to go by memory, and my memory is not always what it should be. Uh, I think it's either Julianne or Julianne House is the Little Miss Grand Falls Windsor. Yeah, so, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Either. But Emily did a great job. Uh, she organized the whole thing and just absolutely super job. Yeah, Kim Shanice, who organized the pageant, did a yeah. fantastic job too. Like I said, I was impressed with the, like I said, the maturity and, and just the poise of the, the, the ladies and the girls and everybody. So well done. And finally, finally, happy 40th birthday. I don't usually wish anybody <laughs> happy birthday, but since we have the cameras here, I'd like to wish happy 40th birthday. Happy 40th birthday to our own. Councillor uh, Amy Cody Davis. Her birthday was Friday, I believe it was. <laughs> Thursday. Thursday? <laughs> yeah. You don't mind me telling your age? Well, 40? It's too, it's too, late, it's too late to ask now. I'm just wondering. But if I had a big sign behind me, I would do it. I would have a big 40 behind me. But I'm, considering I'm, the alternative, 40 is pretty good. Yeah. And you're, and you're lucky they're getting rid of Bill 29, because that would have been a problem. <laughs> Well, that's a happy birthday, and thanks for joining Thank us you. and inviting us to your house. And it thanks was great. for coming and to my party. There you go. And that's all for me. Thank you, Councillor Pinson. Councillor Mercer. Happy belated uh, to <laughs> Miss uh, Cody Davis. I think that was a little privacy breach, right? <laughs> that's, that's, right? <laughs> Government is all aware of privacy <laughs> breaches. Considering it's all over Facebook and I had like hundreds of greetings from family and friends, I don't think it's no private. <laughs> I still got four years left. <laughs> <laughs> is, that to 50? Yeah. is that is that to 50 or what <laughs> yeah good one That's too <laughs> uh, mr. mayor on a more serious note I want to congratulate uh, mr. Nichols and his entire staff Todd Mercer for phenomenal work that they've done in the Beaver I don't want to sound repetitive or not but uh, myself and the deputy mayor had the opportunity to attend the uh, Midwinter Biver uh, feast on Saturday night, and it was absolutely phenomenal. Like this guy is so funny, Shama Jundra. Like I was peeing myself laughing, honestly. It was a great time I had by all, and uh, um, the feedback I'm getting from people that were in attendance as well. When can we get him back? When's town going to do something like this again? So it's uh, to end a great weekend on a positive note like that's phenomenal. Um, on another note, uh, I think it was yesterday or today, our fire chief was in the media talking about 911 service. 911 service is something that this province has lacked for decades. All other provinces have added that kind of thing. And for some reason, we've been a little bit behind the times, but we're here now. We got province wide 911 service, but it's still in its early stages, it's in its infancy stages. And uh, a warning from our fire chief today was like, we've, we have 911 service. You do not need to pick up the phone and dial 911 just to test it. We've already tested it. Staff has tested. We don't need you tying up lines. But tying up lines is exactly what this is doing. For anyone in central Newfoundland, if you dial 911, you're getting rerouted to Corner Brook, and there's two operators going to answer the phone. So right now what you're doing, if you're dialing 911 just to test the system, 
you're putting somebody's life or emergency at risk because if the operator says 911 what is your emergency okay you've achieved what you wanted to do the system is working and most people would hang up but yet that operator on the other end has got work to do they've got to confirm now if that was an emergency or not so they're tying up a phone line now there's only two phone lines so I would encourage residents of Grand Falls Windsor we've got our own dispatch we've got our own fire and emergency personnel so pick up the phone if you're a resident of Grand Falls Windsor do like you've always done an emergency uh, 489-2222 you're going to get our own dispatch service uh, response time will probably be about same but the chances of you getting a busy signal or not getting a dispatch is probably much better than if you dial 911. So uh, hopefully we'll all be able to use 911 service and uh, hopefully uh, people will get the response time. It's there as a service that we need. Hopefully none of us will ever have to uh, dial 911. But for residents of Grand Falls, Windsor, pick up the phone, 489-2222. Uh, you'll always get one of our own dispatchers that we work 24 7 365 days a year the guys are highly qualified trained and able to take your call so uh, just try and remember that folks um, on another note Canadian Cancer Society uh, the relay for life steering committee will be officially launching the 13th relay for life here in Grand Falls Windsor tomorrow night uh, it's Wednesday March 4th at uh, 7 p.m. at the coffee shop at the Joe Byrne Arena and at this time, the uh, Relay for Life uh, Steering Committee will be introducing its patron for the uh, relay this year, and in addition to revealing this year's theme. So anyone that's interested and uh, would like to get out and participate tomorrow night, you're more than welcome to do so. Um, one other issue, or... Probably should say, too, at this point, to segue into it, certainly congratulate Councillor Mercer on being uh, recognized as a champion of... Uh, Cancer Society this year, and he has uh, the task of raising $10,000. I'm sure he'll be able to do it because he's got the contacts to do that. So, so we certainly like to congratulate uh, Councillor Mercer on that and certainly wish him the best as he strives to get to that uh, $10,000 mark, and I'm sure he'll, do, he'll get there no problem. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. It's uh, actually an honor and a privilege to uh, represent the town and be a part of uh, this great cause. Uh, Relay for Life does a lot of great work in the community and especially for residents of rural Newfoundland. Uh, this is not something I wanted to talk about tonight but uh, anyone that's living in rural Newfoundland and receiving cancer treatment, uh, the Canadian Cancer Society funds Daffodil Place in St. John's and they do a lot of, provide a lot of services that uh, a lot of us are not aware of unless we're in a situation dealing with a loved one that is facing cancer. So uh, it's a great uh, community organization and they do well. So thank you, Mr. Mayor, for that little plug. So uh, I'll challenge you right now if you would like to be my first donor. <laughs> uh, we'll move on. <laughs> See? It's a challenge. Now, Mr. Mayor, dig deep. Don't be cheap, but don't dig too deep. That's what it changes to. Just up a little further from that's where the real bills are. So I'll be looking for a nice donation. What kind of a rhyme is that? <laughs> so thank you again, Mr. Mayor, for your pledge of $50. No Greatly problem. appreciated. No problem. Can you put that down, uh, Mr. Pinson? <laughs> but uh, on a more serious note. Actually, so. I was going to hire, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, 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 like, I don't want to take too much now, right? I'll, go, I'll get 50 well, from we're Joe. On, we're on, that's right. Um, <laughs> uh, yesterday... Uh, myself and uh, Councillor Moores had the opportunity to uh, be present at the pre-budget consultations here in Grand Falls, Windsor uh, with Minister uh, Sullivan, who was representing the Minister of Finance and uh, uh, Exploits MHA, Mr. Forsey, and um, myself and Councillor Moores had the opportunity to represent the town and make a formal presentation. Uh, this year's pre-budget consultation is a little different than other years. And it seems that this year the government has turned to a budget simulator. So once you're going through the presentation, you get this little clicker, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and they ask you questions and you got to, okay, A, B, or one, two, three, and they put the results up, that kind of thing. So it's a little different. It wasn't what I was really expecting. I don't think Councillor Morris was expecting the same thing because they'd ask questions in a way and 
give you six and seven different options and uh, much different from what I was really expecting in pre-budget consultation. I understand, I understand the, turnout, the turnout was not at... Uh, the turnout was very dismal, it was pretty bad actually. But uh, this budget simulator is supposed to illustrate the tough budget choices the provincial government is facing and promote public dialogue and now we can go forward for a sustainable financial future. And uh, in my opinion, the um, representing the town going forward with a formal presentation, this simulation didn't do this at all. Uh, the information that they gave in asking questions was recent, but the options to adjust income and spending it really did not cover the full range of policy choices that we would have seen in previous years. I don't know. Uh, I think you were present at the last uh, I've been budget consultation. For the last five, I think. The last five, yeah. So uh, it did not really present increases or decreases. It did not give many options, that kind of thing. And an actual fact, I don't like to say it, but it seemed to me like a farce. And um, given that Minister of Finance wasn't present, uh, we weren't able to ask very specific questions. I know Minister Sullivan did a phenomenal job in giving a presentation, but um, um, she's minister and uh, she's not minister of finance and it's not her budget that's coming down so uh, there was a lot of uncertainty but given the minister's uh, presentation there appears to be a lot of uncertainty uh, going forward with the economy here in Newfoundland and Labrador and with the economy it has a trickle down effect to us as a town council and uh, as councillor and chair of finance administration this is very worrisome to me. Um, and just, I was, as we were doing the presentation yesterday, I was constantly making notes. Um, it seems like uh, they want to control the agenda. They want to, to control the public dialogue. Uh, we had the opportunity to um, give our presentation, but uh, other than that, there wasn't much dialogue around the table. It would have been great if the Minister of Finance would have been present because you would have been able to ask them very specific questions. One of my main concerns is that last week, Dr. Wade Locke, an economist at Memorial University, suggested that the province increased the HST from 13% to 15%. That's all fine enough if you're not into planning. But as a municipality, back in December, we did our budget for 2015. And to tack on 2% increase in taxation means that we've got to come up with 2% savings somewhere. And ultimately, it means cutting back on projects and costs. Like we do have a little extra cash on board, but uh, how much longer that's going to be on man for, we don't really know. So I requested that the minister bring that information back to uh, the Minister of Finance because uh, we've got serious concerns about that. Um, in saying this, uh, from what I've been hearing around town, people that I've been chatting with, uh, people are feeling the effects of the economy. Uh, we have a, a transient population in terms of workers uh, going out west, commuting back and forth, and we're actually starting to see layoffs. We've got tech up on uh, closing now this year. Uh, we had 48 employees with the town of, uh, from the town of Grand Falls, Windsor, working at the mine. Uh, there was a lot of other uh, employees in neighboring communities, but my biggest fear right now is that with the slowdown in the economy, in the mining, uh, in the Alberta oil and gas, uh, it's going to have a trickle down effect right down to us right here because uh, what's going to happen to mortgages, what's going to happen to housing starts. Last week or the week before, the advertiser reported that in 2012 we had approximately 120 housing starts. 2013 we had, I think, 85 or 86. And last year was below 40. So we've seen a big downward turn or spiral in housing starts. So in my opinion, uh, this is something that we've got to plan for. And uh, like I said, uh, being the sort of the service region of the exploits area, uh, we need to sit back as a council and uh, plan for the immediate future. Uh, this upcoming budget is going to have major uh, impacts on what we do. Uh, we don't know if our capital uh, projects are going to be there on a 70-30 uh, split basis. Uh, I'd like to be able to maintain what we got right now with the government. I'd like to see more come our way, but uh, this is not a time to go to government with a wish list for Santa Claus. This is a time to go to government and uh, sort of say, can we keep what we've got? 
Now, I did make the uh, argument yesterday that we would uh, prefer very much if the budget made the decision with the municipal fiscal framework, if the province would alleviate the, uh, their portion of the HST just like the government does, but uh, I don't think that's going to happen given that uh, the shape that the economy is in. Now, this could all be fair mongering. I really don't know when. We won't know until the budget is bought down. But um, media reports is not making it look too bad. But on the other end, the Minister of Finance, I think it was last week or the week before, said everything is on the table. Everything from public sector jobs, cutbacks, wherever, uh, downsizing, government, that kind of thing. And I think they're looking at doing an overall evaluation of where they spend the money. Uh, my fear is about public sector cutbacks and jobs is that as a service industry and a service community, there are a lot of public sector jobs here in Grand Falls, Windsor. And uh, the last thing I'd like to see is 40 jobs slashed here, workers' comp slashed, uh, health care slashed, um, government services slashed. And these are all realistic possible cutbacks. I'm not just specifically singling out any group, but everything across the board in government is on the chopping block or perceived to be on chopping block. And uh, um, I hope that's not the case. I hope we're able to salvage everything. I'd love to be able to grow in this budget, but you've got to be mindful of what the government's got to do in this current situation. Uh, in saying this, um, we've got a, um, a big operation, Town of Grand Falls, Windsor. Our budget, our capital projects, and all that kind of stuff, we've got a staff of approximately uh, 100 people working year-round. We're, we've been doing absolutely phenomenal for a community our size. We're growing. We're reinvesting back in. We're being proactive with the work that we do, replacing aging water and sewer systems, building parks. Like You compare our town to other towns around the province, we're doing phenomenally well. But my fear is right now is that uh, with the provincial cutbacks, and we don't know really what's going to happen in the province, uh, we could go from, uh, well, a good position to a very bad position overnight financially. And uh, my fear is that we don't want to end up in the same position that the government is right now provincially. Two years ago, the provincial government was a flush with cash, and so they were. But how things change in two years? Maybe what we should do is possibly learn from their mistake, and not mistake, but down downturn or misfortune and maybe what we need to do really is look at our own operations uh, are we doing things the right way are there things that we could be doing better maybe it's time for us as a council to consider having an independent audit done by somebody like kpmg to come in and do an overall evaluation are the things that we're doing here in the town right now could we do better could we are we doing work where we shouldn't need to be doing work our services being doubled up. Uh, any possible way to correct anything we're doing wrong? From my point of view right now, I think we're doing great as a town, but I'd like to see an independent analysis of what we could be doing better if possible. And by being better, I mean saving money in the long run. So I think it's something that we should seriously give consideration to in the coming months, and especially after the provincial budget because uh, my fear is that the cutbacks are going to trickle down and uh, we're going to feel the brunt of these uh, cutbacks. So anyway, Mr. Mayor, so my apologies for being long-winded, but... Uh, I was going to cut you off halfway through, but I said, no, I'll let you go. <laughs> uh, well, listen, if you would have cut me off, I wouldn't have sat down anyway. <laughs> Thank you. Council Morris. Oh, how do I follow that? You don't. Man, oh, it's, man. it's not as long. It's okay for you guys. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. It's okay for you guys. You were sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> no cameras. <laughs> uh, again, I'd like to, uh, as the, some of the councillors said, I'd like to congratulate uh, Dave on the, on the great events that we had in the community the last couple of weeks with with the Midwinter River and the Winter Lode. Uh, congratulate the staff, Dave. They did an excellent job. Also, we had a meeting yesterday for the, uh, the Citizen of the Year. It was our first meeting, and we set a date. The date is uh, Wednesday, May the 13th. So I am encouraging all service organizations, uh, service clubs, churches, sports organizations, businesses, 
or any other any citizen who wants to uh, nominate somebody to uh, start thinking about it, and we'll have more information to follow on the deadline for nominations and so forth. But it's going to be held at the uh, Royal Canadian Allegiant on May the 13th, so uh, we'll you'll be able to pick up information from the town website uh, very soon. That's it for me, Mr. Mayor. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Councillor Morris, Councillor Cody Davis. Thank you. And uh, just a couple items for me. <clears throat> um, the status of Women's Central is hosting International Women's Day dinner uh, this Thursday, March 5th, I will attend. Um, and I'm looking forward to that. That's always a great event every year and a great opportunity to celebrate women. Um, and this year's entertainment is uh, Leslie Oak and her dancers. Uh, this event usually sells out within a day or so of it being advertised, so I would be surprised if there are any seats available. However, um, if you are interested in attending, I'm sure you could give the uh, Women's Centre a call at 489-8919, and um, if they have a waiting list or if there are seats available, they'll certainly let you know. I did also... Um, have the pleasure of attending the 16th Annual Business Excellence Awards and Hall of Fame induction for the uh, Exploits Regional Chamber of Commerce uh, last week. And I uh, just want to say uh, congratulations to all of the nominees and especially to the winners. Um, I will give a brief rundown of the winners. Uh, Small Business of the Year Award was Aquamarine Services. The Helping Hands Award went to Canadian Tire. The Ambassador Award went to the Dockside Restaurant. The Customer Service Award went to Precision, Precision Collision. Uh, Business Growth Award was Newtown Cleaners and Restoration. Business Woman of the Year Award, Cheryl Hillier. Personal Excellence Award was Art Gill. And the Business of the Year was uh, Jeb Enterprises. Uh, the Desmond Kenny, <coughs> excuse me, Family Award went to Gill's Construction, and the 2014 Hall of Fame inductees were the Peyton family, <coughs> excuse me, of Botwood, Ambrose Hall at Norris Arm, Bond Beverages, Grand Falls, Windsor, C.J. Yates Store, Millertown, Ernest Becker, Becker's Jewelers, Grand Falls, Windsor, and the Burge family of uh, Bishop's Falls. Um, so I want to say thanks to all of the sponsors and all those who nominated um, businesses and business people for those awards. And thanks again to the uh, Chamber of Commerce for um, being the host and to the Royal Canadian Legion again for a fantastic meal. Um, I did want to single, single out one um, of the nominees for Small Business of the Year. The Classic Theatre here in Grand Falls, Windsor. We frequent the theatre um, with uh, myself and friends and my husband and our children. Um, we're there, there quite a lot. And I have to say, um, I congratulated Sean on his uh, nomination when we were there on Sunday. Um, and um, he said, we certainly didn't lose. Um, he said, between Friday and Sunday, they had gone through 280 pounds of popcorn kernels in two days. <laughs> The theater was blocked solid. They showed the SpongeBob movie this weekend. They had a Sunday matinee at 2 o'clock. At 20 after 1, the 2 o'clock matinee was sold out. That was after a 6 o'clock showing on Friday and a 2 o'clock showing on Saturday. And um, during the uh, selling of the tickets for the 2 o'clock show, off the cuff, they added a 5 o'clock show. And that show sold out from patrons waiting to get into the 2 o'clock show. So, I, um, a, I, I did hear a stat that um, the classic theatre on High Street has the highest uh, viewing highest. audience of any independent movie theatre in Atlantic in Canada. Atlantic Canada. Yep. So that's... The highest grossing independent theater, theater in Atlantic in Canada. Canada. So that's yep. great. So they're doing fantastic things there. And I remind the kids often, like if we travel out of town or something, um, going to different <coughs> tournaments and things like that, if you have a bit of downtime, normally you want to go see a movie. And there's not a lot of communities that you can go to across the province 
where you can actually go to a movie. They just don't have movie theaters anymore. So I always remind them how fortunate they are that we have this movie theater available, and I, all, I would encourage anybody to take advantage and go. They've done some wonderful things there. Um, they have the current movie showing. Um, they've got excellent service. The concessions are fantastic. So again, um, make sure you uh, stop by and uh, have a visit. Um, what else did I have? Oh yes, um, I will be attending as one of the speakers along with Sue Rogers, Dr. Jennifer Mercer and Melissa Blackmore. We will be speakers at the uh, Female Empowerment Day, which is an event put off by the Exploits Valley High Social Action Committee. And that's going to be held this Saturday from 1 to 4. It's for girls in grades 3 to 6. Um, they always have a great Saturday, um, always have good participation, and uh, it's a great little event. Um, they, talk, they do some fun activities. They talk about the importance of friendship, fitness. Um, they do little team building and esteem exercises. So I'm uh, really looking forward to that. And uh, I will update um, council on that after uh, once it's all completed and let them know how everything went. And also, I wanted to... Um, our economic development officer passed me a note about black garbage bags, and funnily enough, I had the same comment written on my sheet. Great minds think alike, Gar. Stupid, stupid dangerous. <laughs> Mine's greater than yours, and still younger. Um, anyway, there's nothing but respect here, i got to say. <laughs> but the black garbage bags, um, a lot of people keep their uh, tins and, and pop containers and two-liter bottles. Uh, one of the um, uses for the black garbage bags, if you're not putting those recyclables out at the curbside, a lot of people keep them for um, donations to community groups or they have uh, bank accounts for grandchildren or whatever. Use your black bags to store your recyclables in. It makes it easy to transport. It's easy for community groups for picking up. Um, and it's easy if you bring them out to Nova Recycling yourself and you can donate them to the whole list of community groups that they have there. Um, you just tear the bag open anyway and it's garbage after that anyway. So that is one use for the black garbage bags that I'm sure, you know, and they're fairly big so you can get a lot in them so it's not going to take up a whole lot of storage in that either. So uh, keep your black garbage bags for that and make sure well, if you I'm don't keep your happy. recyclables yourself there's tons of organizations within our community school groups library um, scouts anybody uh, who are more than willing to pop up to your house any day of the week and take those off your hands for you so you can use your black garbage bags for that Good. and just one funny comment because you were got talking funny? about yes funny um, you were talking about how you know we're trying to follow the rules and, and make sure our recyclables go into blue bag and the clear goes in the clear bag or the garbage goes in the clear bag. Um, we our garbage collection day is Friday, so we start at Monday fresh, and um, we were doing really well. And then my husband decided to dump the vacuum into the recyclable bag, so he contaminated <laughs> our <laughs> my. He does. Well, that's the good thing. The good thing is that the husband vacuumed. The bad thing is he contaminated our recyclable bag. So anyway, half of one, six a dozen of the other, I guess. No good deed goes unpunished. You got it. <laughs> Thank you. Perfect. Good. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for your participation. By the time it gets to me, I don't have any items left. But I do want to mention that I will be um, attending the FFAW rally tomorrow morning on the LIFO. And uh, if I'll be leaving here around 9 o'clock, so if anybody, it's free, if you want to ride, you can come along. Um, anyway, I just uh, got the invitation, I think all council got the invitation, so uh, uh, I w it was in an email. So uh, if anyone is available, I will be going, and uh, otherwise, uh, I guess that's it for tonight, and uh, we will uh, see you in three weeks, and I have a motion to adjourn. Move, move by Councillor Moore. Second by Councillor Cody Davis, and we'll see you in three weeks.